Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, July 18th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my appeal for mercy. Because he has turned his ear to me, I will call out to him as long as I live. The ropes of death were wrapped around me, and the torments of Sheol overcame me. I encountered trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord guards the inexperienced. I was helpless, and he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, rescued me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said, I am severely oppressed. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. How can I repay the Lord for all the good he has done for me? I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The death of his faithful ones is valuable in the Lord's sight. Lord, I am indeed your servant. I am your servant, the son of your female servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, within you, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hannah promised that if the Lord gave her a son, she would dedicate him to the Lord's service throughout his life. Today we're going to see Hannah fulfill that vow. And we're also going to see a stark contrast between the boy Samuel and the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas. When Elkanah and all his household went up to make the annual sacrifice and his vow offering to the Lord, Hannah did not go and explained to her husband, after the child is weaned, I'll take him to appear in the Lord's presence and to stay there permanently. Her husband Elkanah replied, Do what you think is best, and stay here until you've weaned him. May the Lord confirm your word. So Hannah stayed there and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him with her to Shiloh, as well as a three-year-old bull, half a bushel of flour, and a clay jar of wine. Though the boy was still young, she took him to the Lord's house at Shiloh. Then they slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli. Please, my Lord, she said, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this boy, and since the Lord gave me what I asked him for, I now give the boy to the Lord. For as long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. Then he worshipped the Lord there. Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is lifted up by the Lord. My mouth boasts over my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not boast so proudly or let arrogant words come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge and actions are weighed by him. The bows of the warriors are broken, but the feeble are clothed with strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for food. Those who are starving hunger no more. The woman who is childless gives birth to seven, but the woman with many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and gives life. He sends some down to Sheol and he raises others up. The Lord brings poverty and gives wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the trash heap. He seats them with noblemen and gives them a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. He has set the world on them. 
He guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness. For a person does not prevail by his own strength. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder in the heavens against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give power to his king. He will lift up the horn of his anointed. Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy served the Lord in the presence of the priest Eli. Eli's sons were wicked men. They did not respect the Lord or the priest's share of the sacrifices from the people. When anyone offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged meat fork while the meat was boiling and plunge it into the container, kettle, cauldron, or cooking pot. The priest would claim for himself whatever the meat fork brought up. This is the way they treated all the Israelites who came there to Shiloh. Even before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say to the one who was sacrificing, Give the priest some meat to roast, because he won't accept boiled meat from you, only raw. If that person said to him, Fat must be burned first, then you can take whatever you want for yourself. The servant would reply, No, I insist that you hand it over right now. If you don't, I'll take it by force. So the servant's sin was very severe in the presence of the Lord, because the men treated the, treated the Lord's offering with contempt. We now turn to the final portion of Paul's letter to the Christians in Galatia, as he encourages them to carry one another's burdens. Brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves so that you also won't be tempted. Carry one another's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone considers himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let each person examine his own work, and then he can take pride in himself alone and not compare himself with someone else, for each person will have to carry his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all his good things with the teacher. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will also reap, because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh, but the one who sows to the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. Let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us, do, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Look at what large letters I use as I write to you in my own handwriting. Those who want to make a good impression in the flesh are the ones who would compel you to be circumcised, but only to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even the circumcised don't keep the law themselves, and yet they want you to be circumcised in order to boast about your flesh. But as for me, I will never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been crucified to me through the cross, and I to the world. For both circumcision and uncircumcision mean nothing. What matters instead is a new creation. May peace come to all those who follow this standard, and mercy even to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, because I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.